Hello everyone, Freedy Hero here, and welcome to another Titanfall 2 loadout video, where I bring you new loadouts to try every once a week. Today's loadout is a very requested loadout that many people want to see me take on, even though this pilot is one of the most basic and simplest fighter within Titanfall Assault to use. His name is the Striker. Now it did take me a whole week to figure out what type of role and playstyle this pilot should go with, and I must admit this loadout was very hard to work with as I went with multiple playstyles only come up with zilch that was fun and interesting to use. But I've managed to find a role to use a loadout in within multiplayer. And like the pilot, it's very simple and easy to follow. So enough of the introduction, let's go straight into the loadout. So for the class, we will run with a grapple pilot with a tannish colour scheme. Now although the grapple class has been nerfed in the sense to have one charge for his grapple rather than two, he's still very effective in using his grapple to get out of danger climb higher areas for better vantage views, or hit your right on the titans, which could end good or bad depending on who you're, gen who you're generally grappling onto. But if you don't want to use your grapple whatsoever and you want to follow the striker pilot down to the T, then don't use your grapple at all, just run like a normal pilot, or think of, your think of yourself like a later generation of a pilot that never relied on his tacticals, just his wall running skills and his general fighting in close quarters. Your primary will be the R101C, as this is the main weapon that the striker is commonly seen using through some of the art, and also I've been told many times that this is one of the weapons that he's been using throughout. However, you can use the R201 as well, as literally they are both the same weapon, just different skin colours. So whether you want to use the R101C or the R201 is entirely up to you. Your secondary will be the RE45 for close and quarter fights, and a mini bullet hose for taking down grunts and pilots in close quarters. Now in one situation I did go ahead and use a normal wingman to just generally test out and see if it fitted well perfectly and visually the weapon is nice that's one thing that we can all get right but practically the weapon is absolutely terrible and unless you're that type of person that like a challenge like one of the most severe challenges I recommend that you don't use this weapon because it's so weak and like I, I believe I've done this before in another previous video where this weapon here, it takes around 4 shots to kill a grunt. 4 shots. While the RE45 will most likely take less shots than that. So unless you're the type of person that enjoys these very messed up challenges and you want to try out the normal wingman just for this loadout, then more power to you. But honestly, I recommend that you stick with the RE45 if you want to have a better fighting chance in close quarters. Your anti titanry weapon will be the archer for that slow hitting but damaging titan weaponry when you need to clear out an area of titans or generally annoying reapers. Just remember that this weapon does have a lock on and it will notify the user that they've been locked on so you will, ha so you will have to get creative at best to try and distract them. If they get distracted then you'll be able to do some severe damage onto them to the point of where they'll have to eject from the titan. Your ordnance will be the Firestar that can help with closing off areas, taking on big groups of grunts, taking on titans, and also allowing you to take out pesky pilots that get in your way. Your boosts will be either the tip mines for searching down pilots or amp weapons to increase your damage for a few minutes. For this role, I decided to go with the amp weapon because it kind of fits the role for the striker, as the striker is more designed for 1v1 fights and he's great for clearing up grunts in 1v1 situations and just, you know, steamballing grunts and pilots. When he needs to, so adding on amp weapon will probably work out within your favor. But don't let that change your mind, as you can go with the tip mind, which is also fits for a one v one pilot like the striker. As while he's putting down some support fire onto a group of grunts and pilots, he can throw a few tip mines behind enemy lines to catch them off guard, which can then either kill them outright or get them out of cover, and leaving them out in the open for you to finish them off. The Titan will be a customised Ronin with ricochet rounds and dual smoke. This Titan loadout will focus on escaping pilots that like to run into room and spam their anti-Titan weapon from afar, which is something that you'll notice quite a lot when you're playing Titanfall 2. And the dual smokes for your Titan is there to allow you to, I say generally, one, take out pilots that like to jump on you and steal your battery, and two, to actually make some breathing room in case Titans decide to get up close and try to melee you to death. Because you are a Ronin, that is your strider, you are very low on health, so you can be easily taken out. And you'll notice a lot that when you're in your doom state, a lot of titans will try to charge at you. So before they start charging at you, lay down some smoke, 
because one, it will block out their view, two, it'll give you enough time to make a run for it, and three, if anything, you can try to bait them in into an area that you know why all your buddies are waiting. This could be a win-win for you, but depending on how you play out, it could work in your favour or you could mess up. It really does depend on how you want to go with this. Lastly, your pilot kit will be fast regen for a health recovery and low profile for sneaking around and attacking titans when they least expect it. Now, playing as though that, I made sure not to get too caught up in 1v1 fights. And although the pilot is designed for that type of gameplay, you can get overswarmed by players who come together and work as a team, which is also a weakness for him, funny enough, in Time for Assault. So, to make the striker playstyle work out within your favour, I suggest you find a teammate, generally anyone no matter what level they are, and stick with them throughout the whole match, and generally just co-op with them. Just make sure that the person you do find is someone you can keep up with at least, and also someone that also notices that you are trying to work with them. The reason behind this is to give the striker pilot an actual role in PvP, since Type 4 Assault and Type 4 2 are both completely different in terms of in-game mechanics. So it can give you guys something to work with, and also because it's fun to work with a total stranger who both have the same endgame goal as you. Plus, you may also make a friend at the end of this, depending on how fun, how chaotic, or how absolutely stupid you guys want to get. But just remember, this isn't always for everyone. Some people will notice this straight away, and they'll generally work with you as if they are your true life friend or partner. Other times, some players won't even blink at you or even notice you, which is kind of sad, but that is generally how the in-game multiplayer world works in most online games. So play Striker as if you were playing him in Time for Assault. Focus on taking out grunts in heavily protected areas with pilots so you can get their attention while weakening the defence. Then once things start to get hectic, find your co-op partner and stick with them to increase your chance of survival. Your gear is designed for taking down pilots and grunts with relative ease so you don't have to worry about being at any sort of disadvantage. Except for the fact that if you decide to go with the normal wingman, then that's kind of your fault. Even though I did recommend it, it's your fault. At this point, all you have to do for the rest of the game is stick with your selected partner. And work together, even when both of you are in titans that are completely different. Since you being in Ronin, you can act like a bait. While your partner can keep up with sustained fire and so forth. Kind of like, you know, yin and yang, just both work together and try and coordinate. Now you use mics if you have it, or if you don't use mic, use the more basic forms that of communications, like teabagging. That's always worked, and even now to this day, it still works. This loadout isn't so much as a team support role you'll be playing, as you still have to keep up and do your part of taking on guts and other players, but rather a co-op supporter role, who can help with taking out pilots who may be causing trouble, or help with pushing the enemy team back while waiting for your team to regroup. But in general, this will be just you two, just two pilots. You'll be the person that's going to be helping out the other pilot, and the other pilot will be generally helping you out if they notice what you're doing. Think of it like Bonnie and Clyde or Davis and Jaws. You're both equally skilled and both of you can take on others while on your own. Just in this instance here, you don't know the person you're working with, which could be a pro or a con. So whether you want to go solo, or whether you want to work with a teammate. The striker is designed to focus on both aspects of these two areas. Your loadout is generally designed to allow you to support yourself and survive many one-on-one -on -one fights and take on a bunch of grunts quite easily and farm enough points. But at the same time, you can also go ahead and find someone to work with and support you. As although the striker is powerful on his own, he's better off supporting another pilot on the battlefield as two pilots are better than one. So that is the end of my video, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, then by all means leave a like, a comment and subscribe for more. If you didn't, then by all means leave a dislike, I'll understand, I'll look back over the video and I'll see what I need to improve on in the near future and also I'll look back over the comments to see what you guys liked and what you guys didn't like and what you guys like to see me do next. So once again guys, thank you all for watching and I hope to see you again soon.